Okay, we are starting our unit on quadratics, and this is just something that we're going to visit this week, and then we might come back to it, hopefully. So we've been graphing things that are linear, which are straight lines. So a linear function is represented by the equation y equals mx plus b. This is slope-intercept form, and its graph is a line. So a linear function is a line, and that's what we've been mainly working with. Today we're going to be talking about our quadratic function, and this is represented by this equation, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So I know it looks pretty big and pretty long. Its graph is U-shaped, and it's called a parabola. And we talked about that earlier in the year, about the U-shaped graph being called a parabola, but it is our quadratic function. Okay, going through these pieces just a little bit, this A that's in front of the X squared, it is called the quadratic factor. And A determines how wide or how narrow the parabola is. And we're going to explore more of that later this week. We're not going to do anything with B in this class, but we will talk about what C does. And C, it's the constant. And what it does is it affects how the graph moves as far as up or down is concerned. So the C moves graph up or down. And we're going to explore more about A later and C later. Not so much in these notes. Okay, so let's talk about our parent quadratic equation. Our parent quadratic equation is y equals x squared. And just to um, refresh our memories about another way of writing y, another way of writing y is f of x. So you might see this f of x equals x squared. Both of these mean the same thing because y and f of x mean the same thing. So this is our parent quadratic function. Do you remember what our parent linear function is? Our parent linear function is y equals x or Another name for y, f of x equals x. So this is our equation for our linear parent. And y equals x squared is our equation for our quadratic parent. And in this problem, remember a is the number in front of the x squared. So what's in front of the x squared that you don't see? A 1. So our a is a 1. And then C is the constant that's in the back. So do you see anything back there? Nope. So the C is a 0. So it's like Y equals 1X squared plus 0. But we just normally write that as Y equals X squared. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and we're going to graph our quadratic parent. So I'm going to plug negative 2 into this X. If I put negative 2 into this x and square it, what's negative 2 times negative 2? 4. Then I'm going to plug negative 1 into this x and square it. What's negative 1 squared? What's negative 1 times negative 1? Positive 1. Then I'm going to plug 0 in and square it. What's 0 squared? 0. Then I'm going to plug in a positive 1. What's positive 1 squared? 1 times 1? One. 1. 
Then I'm going to plug the 2 back in, the positive 2, and then what's 2 squared? 2 times 2? Two? 4. Okay, let's go ahead and plot these points. So negative 2, 4, I'm going to go left 2 and up 4. Negative 1, 1, I'm going to go left 1 and up 1. 0, 0 is at the origin. 1, 1 is right 1 and up 1. And 2, 4 is right 2 and up 4. So this is what our quadratic parent looks like. It is a parabola. It's a U-shaped graph. It opens upward, and its vertex, this point down here, the lowest point of this graph is called the vertex. Its vertex is here at 0, 0. Okay, we're going to learn several things about these graphs today. So, first thing is... Parabolas are symmetrical. Which means that we have an axis of symmetry. What the axis of symmetry does is it splits the parabola right down the middle. So I'm going to draw in our axis of symmetry right now. The axis of symmetry is the line that splits the parabola in half, so the right side of it looks like the left side of it. So this guy right here is called our axis of symmetry. You can see that the axis of symmetry is a vertical line. And so all vertical lines have an equation of what? x equals, because typically all vertical lines only cross the x-axis. So vertical lines have the equation of x equals, and then I'm just going to say some number. And I'm going to be more specific about what that number is here in a second. Like right here, everywhere on this line, what does my x have a value of? My x has a value of zero because I'm not right, I'm not left at all. And that would be the equation to my axis of symmetry. Okay, the point where the graph changes directions is called the vertex. So here you can see that the graph rises to the right and here you can see the graph rises to the left. So the vertex is the point where the graph changes directions. In the graph of the parent function, the vertex is the same as, in the parent function, this vertex, it's our y-intercept. But that's not always the case. So, today we're going to learn another name for the vertex. The vertex is either going to be called a maximum or a minimum. In this picture, is the vertex the lowest point of the graph, or is it the highest point of the graph? It's the lowest point of the graph, so we would call it a minimum. But let me just come over here to the side for a second. If I drew a parabola, and I'm going to go ahead and give a few little tick marks here, and I'm going to show you something else. So I'm not going to draw this very accurate, but let's just say I put the vertex right there, put a point there, put a point there, and I have it going down. I'm just going to label several things for you with this picture. Okay, first of all, <coughs> the axis of symmetry is the vertical line that splits the parabola in half. And let's just talk about our vertex for a second. Is this vertex the highest point of the graph, or is this vertex the lowest point of the graph? It's the highest point. So in this graph, our vertex is called a maximum because it's the highest point of the graph. Let's go ahead and write down what our vertex is, what that maximum is. So the vertex, I go right 1, 2, 3, and up 1, 2. So it's the point 3, 2. If I wanted to write an equation for my axis of symmetry, since it's a vertical line, I know it's going to be x equals 
and it's going to be x equals whatever the x value is everywhere on this line. And what is our x value everywhere on this line? 3. Whatever the x coordinate of the vertex is, that's always going to be the equation to your axis of symmetry. So whatever the x coordinate of the vertex is, that's always the equation to the axis of symmetry. Okay, so that's just a little bit of information, and we're going to learn some more as we go on. Okay, so let's flip, and then I'll probably come back to this picture. The points where the parabola crosses the x-axis are called x-intercepts. So the points where the graph crosses the x-axis, those are called x-intercepts. So looking down at this picture, this right here, this point right here, where the graph touches the x-axis, that's an x-intercept. And right here where the graph touches the x-axis, that's an x-intercept. And they also have other names. There's three other special names. Solutions, zeros, and roots. So wherever the graph touches the x-axis, those are called x-intercepts, solutions, zeros, and roots. All of these words mean the same thing. Let me flip back to my other picture for a minute. So in this picture that I made up here, this point right here and this point right here, they're my x-intercepts, they're my roots, they're my solutions, and they're my zeros. What is our x value right here? Two. And what's our x value right here? Four. So x equals two and x equals four. Those are our solutions, our roots, our zeros, and our x-intercepts. Lots of terminology in this video. Okay, going back. This is having us examine our picture a little bit. It says, what are the coordinates of the vertex? So remember, the vertex is either the lowest point of the graph or the highest point of the graph. So that guy right there is our vertex. And you have, have to pay attention to how this um, scale is going. So it's going by ones on the x-axis, but if you notice, it's going by twos on the y-axis. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So to get to the vertex, I go right one, so my x coordinate's one, and I go down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And since I went down, it's a negative nine. Is our vertex the highest point of the graph or the lowest point of the graph? It's the lowest point of the graph, so we call that a minimum. Okay, if I want to know the equation for the axis of symmetry, remember the axis of symmetry is the vertical line that splits the parabola in half. It's always going to go through the vertex. Because it's a vertical line, I know it's going to have the equation of x equals. And what is our x value everywhere on this line? Our x value is 1. Remember, whatever the x coordinate of the vertex is, that's always the equation to the axis of symmetry. Okay, next it wants to know what are the solutions of the quadratic. So remember, the solutions are the x-intercepts. So what is our x value right here? Remember that x-axis is going by 1's, so negative 1, negative 2. So x equals negative 2 is one of the solutions. And this one is 1, 2, 3, 4. So x equals 4 is the other solution. Okay, so let's just try a little problem here and answer some questions according to the graph. It says, the path of a ball that is kicked upwards can be described by h equals 35t minus 5t squared, where h is the height of the ball in meters and t is the time in seconds. So our ball got kicked up, it went up, 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 and then it came down, 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 down. A says, how high is the ball after three seconds? So I want to know after three seconds, how high is the ball? So here's my time in seconds. So I'm going to go to three seconds, and I'm going to come up, and I'm going to see how high is my ball. And how high would you say my ball is? It is 60 meters in the air. 
Another way I could have done this, since the 3 is the time, I could put 3 right there in that T and 3 right there in that T and work it out by taking 35 times 3 minus 5 times 3 squared. So I could have done it that way too. Okay, B says, after how many seconds will the ball be 50 meters high? Okay, so this time I know the height of my ball. So if I know the height, I'm going to go to my y-axis. The height of the ball is 50, which is right here. And I want to know how many seconds will the ball be that high. So let me move over. So my ball is that high right here. Move over. My ball is that high right there. So at 2 seconds, my ball is 50 meters high. And at 5 seconds, my ball is 50 meters high. So at 2 seconds and 5 seconds which should make sense because the ball goes up and it reaches that height and as it comes down it reaches that height again. <clears throat> C says when will the ball hit the ground? So this is when you kick it and then the ball comes down and it wants to know when will the ball hit the ground? And when will the ball hit the ground? At 7 seconds. And D says, when will the ball reach its maximum height? So this is the highest point of the graph. So that guy right there is called the maximum. And I want to know when it's going to reach that height. So if I come down to see when it reaches that height, about how many seconds is that? Are you recording this? Yes. 3.5 seconds. And that's just a little bit about our parabola. We're going to learn more about this um, later as we go. Thank you so much. Smiley face. Yay! I'm Ollie Wood. <laughs>